Hello, everybody, and for my Filipino friends, Kamusta. And today we are starting recipe number one of four traditional Filipino um, favorite foods. This was something that was requested by Sarah Jane and Mama Didi from Sarah Jane's Journey. And Luna. And Baby Luna. We can't forget Baby Luna. So if you guys haven't went over and checked out Sarah Jane's channel, please do. That's Sarah Jane's Journey. And I will put her link in the description box below. Anyway, so we're going to be making four different things. But we're not going to be making it all on the same day, of course. So tonight is recipe number one. And what we're going to make tonight is a traditional Filipino lumpia. Now, a lot of you would refer to it as an egg roll. And an egg roll and a lumpia are similar, yet they're very different. Um, a lumpia, to, to people in the Philippines and Southeast Asia, a lumpia is what we call an egg roll. What we have here in the U.S. that we call an egg roll, it's kind of like the Chinese version of a spring roll. So while they may look very similar, they taste different. So um, what we're going to need for this traditional one, I went ahead and I did a lot of prepping ahead of time so you guys wouldn't have to stick around with me when I did that. Um, what I have here is I have some ground pork. I just got Smithfield Signature Ground Pork. This is a two pound package. I'm going to be using about half of that. I'm going to be using about a pound. I also have three cloves of garlic that I've minced up. I've got about a half a cup of green onions. I have about a half a cup of just yellow onion. Got about a half a cup of shredded up carrot. And I'm supposed to have a half a cup of green cabbage, but this is, it's just a tad bit over a half a cup. I'm not worrying about it. This is something that we have made before, but not exactly this way. Sometimes I add different things to it, but we're sticking with tradition right now. There's so many different versions of lumpia that you can make depending on what region you're in, what country you're exactly in. But again, we're sticking to traditional. I also have some garlic powder here. And I have some salt and pepper hiding over here in the corner. And the one thing that makes the lumpia is different from an egg roll is right here. These are lumpia wrappers. Now, we normally think of an egg roll as being a square egg roll wrapper. These are what is traditionally used in the Philippines, Malaysia, different countries like that. These are very, very thin. They're very, very fragile. So if you buy them and you freeze them, you want to make sure that you take them out a day ahead of time, stick them in your refrigerator, let them start thawing out. You want them to stay cold, but yet you, you want them to be thawed out all the way. It's not uncommon for these to break apart a little bit, but we're going to try to avoid that. The first one is already broken. If you guys can see that right there. Like I said, it's not uncommon. I'm going to try to show you, providing these will work with me, I'm going to try to show you how I normally separate them. Um, as we're using them, you want to kind of keep them covered with a, a damp towel so that they don't dry out because these will dry out very fast. So I'm not going to open these yet. I'm going to set these off to the side. But these have an actual wonderful taste. I mean, to me, I like these better than I do the egg roll wrappers that you would get from Walmart or whatever. Um, you can order these online. Um, this is the Cymex brand. You can see that right there. This is the Cymex brand. We bought these at our, our local Asian market, but I know you can also order them online. So I have my trusty electric skillet here, and this is what we're going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to 
get it going. Let it start heating up some. So I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of oil in there. You can use any kind of oil you want. Canola oil, olive oil, peanut oil, sesame oil. Um, sometimes we use sesame oil when we're making egg rolls or lumpia, but we're not doing that this time. We're just sticking to tradition. So I'm gonna get my let me get my pork opened up. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to brown up our pork. Once our pork gets browned up, we're gonna take it out of the pan and then we're gonna work on our other stuff and we'll put the pork back in. So I'm gonna stick that in there. And then I'm gonna use my handy dandy food sealer and seal this up so it'll stay good for a long time because we don't wanna waste. Especially with the prices today. Whoo! We went to the stores again today and it's like, it had only been a week since we were at Sam's Club the last time. And already some of the things that we like have went up by a dollar. Just in that short amount of time. Ain't that right, Chef? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm Penguin. That's the chef. And welcome to our kitchen. It's been that kind of a day. So we're just going to chop this up with our handy dandy meat masher. So I hope everybody has had a great day. Yes, it is the start. Well, for a lot of people, it is technically the start of the Labor Day weekend. And I think our friends in Canada also celebrate it. They call it the long weekend. I'm pretty sure. So, happy Memorial Weekend. Happy long weekend. Happy weekend, wherever you are. So... We have a lot of friends, a lot of subscribers that are from the Philippines. So we're also just going to do this as kind of like a salute to the Philippines. A salute to our Filipino friends. And we have some great ones out there. We love our friends. There's a lot of us that have common friends. I know I've, I've seen them on some of the other channels. Yeah, if you ever want to watch something really relaxing, like if you're stressed and you need to just chill for a little bit, tune into Little Island Philippine. They always got a camera going outside with squirrels or birds or whatever. Deer, yeah, eating there, yeah. You just sit there for five minutes and take a deep breath and relax. Yeah, they have a great channel. Um, Burns Garona, I gave him a shout out before. Um, he does a lot of fun things, takes you around different places in the town sometimes and he does some unboxings and I know that the, the language difference is an issue but I mean it's still pretty easy to understand what they're saying by the gestures that they're doing and what they're showing you and you don't have to know the language you don't have to speak the language to be able to enjoy the beauty of the country so, lots and lots of friends from the Philippines so I'm just chopping this up. I want to make sure that it gets all cooked until it's no longer pink. Because again, we're working with pork, and pork is like chicken. It's one of those meats that you want to make sure it gets done all the way through. As soon as this gets all browned up, I'll bring you back. Okay, our pork is all browned up now, so I'm going to take it out and put it in a little handy dandy to go container right here let me get the rest of this out and i'll bring you guys back okay so we got our pork out now i just put it on my cutting board and i'm gonna sit it right over here out of my way we'll be adding that back in so i'm gonna add just a touch more oil just a little got my burner on medium low It's 300 degrees on my electric skillet, but that's about medium low. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in my onions. Let them start going a minute. So 
about a half a cup of onion. Put that over here. And I just want to let that go and let it get a little bit translucent. Dump in my garlic. And I will recommend to use fresh garlic um, instead of the already chopped in the jar. And that's the only reason is is because the fresh garlic is going to give you so much more flavor. If all you have is the chopped garlic in the jar, then that's fine. Because we use that a lot too. But when it comes to egg rolls and stuff, if you can use the fresh, that's better. Does anybody have any great plans for Labor Day weekend? Doing anything fun? Going anywhere? We're if you to Lily yes, we are. This weekend is around here. There's a festival called the Little Italy Festival. It's about how many miles? About 50 miles? 40 miles? It's about 40 or 50 miles north of where we live, but they do it every year. Um. It's in a small town called Clinton, Clinton, Indiana. It's gotten a little smaller over the years, but it's still a festival. You guys can certainly Google it. But it's a fun little thing to go to, so we're planning on going to that. And of course, we'll take you guys with us. It would have been great if we would have had 1K subscribers. We could have done a live, but we're almost there, but just not quite. What, babe? And yard sales. Oh, yes, and uh, yard sales, of course. We have to do the yard sales. We have to do the yard sales. Yeah. Today, yeah, me and the chef, neither one have. I had about a half an hour sleep more than him, and that's about all the sleep I've had. Um, he's been having a bad toothache, which he's feeling better this evening, but we'll see how he is a little bit later. Okay. Yes, thank God for amoxicillin. I'm going to go ahead and dump my cabbage in. I'm going to go ahead and dump my pork back in now. We've got cabbage in. We've got the pork in. I'm going to let this cook just a little bit. Let that cabbage get a little bit soft. We don't want real hard pieces of cabbage in this dish because we don't want them poking through our little delicate lumpia wrappers. If you guys could smell this though, oh it smells so good. Yeah, fresh garlic. Fresh garlic and onions, yes, yes. Yeah. The, 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 the kind of garlic we usually use to chop we buy is good garlic, don't get me wrong, but if you're using it, you usually got to go back and add at least add a little garlic powder if you truly want garlic flavor. It smells so good. So, which Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane makes some really good egg rolls already. Um, but they have a friend that's from the Philippines too, and she's always talking about lumpia. So, they just asked if, since we are always making something different, and when someone asks us if we can make something, we always try. If we've never made it before or we don't have a recipe, We'll find one. We'll go out and hunt for one. But so far, we've been pretty lucky. And most of the stuff that we've made, we've already had a recipe for. But we can thank our great-grandmas, our grandmas, and our moms for that. Again, with Thanksgiving coming, we have some recipes that we want to share. And we'll be doing that during the month of Vlogtober. gonna let this sit and like I said I want that cabbage to get soft a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my carrots again about a half a cup of shredded up minced up carrots get your vitamin C in there carrots are good for your eyeballs yeah. carrots are good for the eyeballs and get this all mixed up. 
I'm going to throw in the green onions at the very last because, you know, green onions just pretty much need warmed up. There's not a whole lot of anything to it, so. And the carrots are shredded so fine that they don't need much either. It's just basically our cabbage. Smells so, so good. I wish we had smell vision or smell a phone. I always say that, but we'd be yeah, we'd be having a smell a phone. Bless Jerry Lewis heart when he had the Jerry Lewis telethon. We'd be having a penguin in the chef's smell a phone. <laughs> Uh, he had a very deep voice. You guys remember Jim Neighbors, the one that played Gomer Pyle? Gomer Pyle, the USMC. Mm hmm. Very deep voice. The Dollar G, Sergeant Carter. <laughs> yeah. He played on that. He played on what? Uh, Andy yeah, the Andy Griffith show. Who was it that passed away the other day? It was an older actor that passed away the other day. Ed Asner. Ed Asner, yeah. That was sad. He was a wonderful actor, too. Mary Tyler Moore show. Anyway, guys, I'm just letting this cook down a little bit. I want that cabbage to get a little bit softer. Yes, we do. So I've never been to the Philippines before. I have flown over the Philippines, and I remember that because our pilot at the time, he always, he always let us know when we were flying over different places and that, and he did say at the time we were flying over the Philippines, but... I'd like to go there sometime, but that's not in our, that's not on our bucket list. Um, the trip that we actually do is going to be going to the UK. So, but with the way the coronavirus is going and with the way uh, prices are going, I don't know. I don't even know if that's going to be a reality anymore. We'll just have to wait and see. A few more minutes on the cabbage and then we'll add all of our, the rest of our stuff. So I'm not going to hold you guys up. We'll be back in just a bit. All right. I think this has probably went just about long enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw in our green onions. Again, about a half a cup of green onions. Get that all in there. Stir that around and we're going to add in our spices. Yes, we are. Going to do about a teaspoon of black pepper. In. Going to do about a teaspoon of salt. Get that in there. We're going to do same thing. We're going to do about a teaspoon of garlic powder. Normally when I'm doing this, I never measure anything, but trying to go by recipe this time. Show them what we're drinking we got today. You can show them. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of this soy sauce, mushroom soy sauce. You want to try to use a dark soy sauce. We got the new 2021 Mountain Dew Voodoo. <laughs> and we're still trying to decide what it tastes like. Uh, I say I, it tastes like Tropical Punch. I say it's got some cherry and lemon flavor, but I can't tell after that. I say Tropical Punch. If any of you guys have tried it already, give us your thought on what you think it yeah. tastes like. Or if you actually know, you found out. Yeah, if you have that secret, you know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> We've heard... Conflicting reports on what people think it tastes like. Yeah, Starburst, Skittles, yeah. and 
Well, last year it was supposed to have tasted like Skittles because last year they had the, the Voodoo also that was a mystery flavor. I don't think it tasted like the one last year. No, it was that one. To me, it, it really, to me, it tastes like Hawaiian Punch. Yeah, not to me. But I don't know. Chef doesn't think it tastes that way to him. It's good. It's, it's sweet. Okay. This is just smelling so good, y'all. Wish you could be here to smell this. I really, 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 really do. See if I can show you what it looks like here. I wish you could smell it. A lot of, a lot of good aroma going on right here, for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I'm going to let this cool for just a little bit. And when I'm ready to open the wrappers and separate those, then I'll bring you back with me. Okay, we're back. As you can see, I took my meat out and I put it over here in this pan to let it cool down just a little bit. And I've got my electric skillet clean, which we're going to be frying in that. So now comes the fun part, and that's going to be to get these apart. I also have a plate to put them on after I get them rolled. And I've got a little, you can see right here, got a little thing of water. You can use egg white or water. I'm going to use just plain water to seal the edges of my lumpia with. So now we're going to open these up. Normally when they're sold, they're sold in a box. Well, at the Oriental store, what they had done is they didn't sell them individually, like a pack inside a box. They had bought a whole case. So when you buy them, they just pull out one of these and that's what you get. Instead of, sometimes these are in an individual box by themselves. Okay, so we got this open. Our hands are clean. So I'm gonna pull these out. And again, they're very delicate, so you want to be careful. I usually take them and just kind of work them around. You're going to have some waste out of here. There's nothing that you can do about that. So the easiest way that I found is if you go about halfway into the, the wrappers themselves and pull it open, you want to be very, very careful. It's like a very flaky, flaky um, wrapper. But don't be afraid of it at the same time. So, just gonna open these a little bit. All right, if any of your edges have a tendency to get a little dry, you can take a damp towel and lay a damp towel over it and stick it in the microwave for like 10 seconds. And that should solve the problem. Okay. I need a little bit more workspace, but that's all right. We're going to do with what we've got. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to lay them right here. And normally, yes, I would cover them with a damp towel, but not doing that right this minute. Okay. So now that I've got them taped broken in half, I'm going to come along and I'm going to try to take one off. And sometimes you do have to double wrap these. That's just real life. But we're going to see if we can get one of these apart as gentle as possible. Takes a little bit of patience. A little bit of time. But good things are worth the wait. Yeah, see the one underneath this one is kind of torn. Alright. Hit this one. Alright. Excuse me, I gotta get rid of this. Guys, can you clean this? It had a nap. It's so nice out. We've had our doors open a little bit today, so yeah. Sometimes those pesky buggers can find their way in. Okay. 
So I've got my lumpia wrapper here. I gotta roll up my sleeves. I don't want my sleeves in it. I'm gonna pull my meat over here. You need to place back. Yeah, if you could just lay it right there. And I usually try to do about two tablespoons full. And I do them usually in the first third of the wrapper right here. Usually two to two and a half tablespoons. Whatever you feel comfortable with, but usually about two, two and a half tablespoons. You don't want to overstuff them. No, you don't want to overstuff them because they will break if you do. Okay, now, normally if I'm using the square egg roll wrappers, I roll them a little different, but because I'm not, I'm using the lumpia, I'm rolling these different. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fold in my sides and let them meet right there. And I'm gonna roll this over and I'm gonna pull it tight. You wanna to try to keep the wrapper tight as you're rolling it. That's the best thing that you can do is to try to keep the wrapper tight. So I'm just gonna roll, roll, roll. And then I'm gonna get me just a tad bit of water. Run it along my edge right here. And this is what we're gonna we're going to roll it on over and seal it. And I'm going to set this on my plate over here. And we're going to get us another one. I, again, I recommend covering them with a damp towel. If you don't have a lot of patience, and this might not be the wrapper for you. You can use the same filling and just use a regular, just use a regular wrapper. The kind that you would find at Walmart. <clears throat> um, I think they're Goya brand or something. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly. But these are, like I said, you got a little patience. These are definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. For anybody that's been following our cannon, of course, we did uh, four quarts of uh, chili fixins and we made uh, six pints of uh, regular but, uh, corn salsa. Mm -hmm. And we've made uh, two quarts of tomato juice now and I made, uh, what was it, six, six half pints of uh, uh, like a Chi Chi's Garden Fresh Salsa the mm -hmm. other night we've made. And I got more tomatoes in, but tonight's tomatoes are going to our family who have the concession trailer because they have a an outing this weekend. They're going to use those at, on in their trailer. Right. So if anybody's following along, that's what we've got put back so far. But we're going to be doing some more stuff. Okay, I'm going to do another one on camera with you guys. Get about two and a half. Two and a half to three tablespoons down here. Scooching it down. And again, I'm gonna fold this side over. I think you guys can see me. This one split a little bit, but it's okay. It's salvageable. <clears throat> I'm gonna fold this up. I'm going to squeeze it tight, not so tight at best, but we're going to squeeze it a little tight and we're going to roll. Just going to roll, roll, roll. Okay. Now, this one busted on me. Again, not uncommon for that to happen. So we're just going to take another one out here. We're gonna lay it down and we're just gonna wrap it just as it is. These are super, super thin, y'all. Super, super thin. Right. Roll, pull it tight, and roll. 
Now we're going to take our water, seal our edges, get it good and moistened. Good and moistened. Okay. And I'm going to lay this one right here also. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and roll a few more. And when I get them done and I'm ready to stick them in the fryer, then we'll bring you back. Okay, guys, and I'm back now. I went ahead and I rolled eight of them. Got one here on my board, and here's the other seven. So we do have some leftover wrapper there. So I am going to uh, wrap that up tightly in some press and seal, put it inside a Ziploc bag, and we're going to stick it in the freezer. So now's the frying time. You want to put about a ha at least a half an inch of oil in your pan. So we're just going to get our oil in here. That ought to do it. Providing it stays clean, uh, me and the chef, sometimes we will filter it. Depends on how it looks. And I'm going to turn this on since it's my electric skillet. I'm going to turn it on about 350. And I'm going to let it start to warm up. And once I think it's at temperature, then we're going to start frying these. So, but that's, that's regular canola oil. Yes. In our little mini deep fryer we have. We don't get our big one out very often, but we have a little mini. I keep peanut oil. Uh, I know the big jugs are like 11 or $12, but at Myers, you can buy, it's only $4 and something for their smaller ones. It's not, it's economical, but for us, it works out really great. You can yeah. buy that size of a bottle. It's a uh, quart bottle. That's if you don't do a lot of frying. Yeah. So. Like I said, we use that in our little, it's a fry baby. I still say that this mystery flavor is like tropical punch. If anybody knows, let us know. Tropical Punch Cotton Candy. If I had to say exactly, that's what I would say. Tropical Punch Cotton Candy. So, yep, again, if any of you guys have tried this already and you have an idea of what you think the flavor is, let us know, please. Don't those things just drive you nuts? <laughs> yeah. I think it's Tropical Punch Cotton Candy. Anyway, we're going to wait for this to come up to temperature. And when I think we're there, then we'll bring you back and we'll start getting these fried up. Okay, guys, we're back. And I think that this is about ready. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my first one. When you put them in, you want to put them in seam side down. And be very careful. Now, these don't take long to cook at all. Um, usually just uh, about... Two minutes is about all it's going to take to cook these. You want to keep an eye on them. I've got my paper towel here that I'm going to take them out with. I don't want to crowd my pan. I want to give them room. And these are so, I'm telling you guys, if you've got the patience to work with the lumpia wrappers, it's so worth it. The filling is delicious. The lumpia wrappers, they taste amazing. Kudos to our fellow Filipinos, because they definitely know how to make a really, really good lumpia. So we're just letting these fry up a little bit. So I'm hoping we can find some good stuff at a yard sale tomorrow. And then when we get home, um... I have my Filipino recipe number two that I'm going to be working on, providing everything goes well. I should never say for certain, but providing everything goes well, I'm going to be working on that. And then I think Chef has something that he's going to be working on. Yeah, sleep. Sleep. No, you can't sleep. Yes. Yeah. Sleep's not, not allowed. I'm ready to go sleep right now. Sleep's not allowed. I'm ready to go sleep right now. No, you can't sleep. Yep. <laughs> Flip these over. I'm going to move this one around. It's not quite ready yet. These just have a special crunch to them that, because you know how sometimes when you go to the, the Chinese restaurant and you get an egg roll and you bite into it and the outside may be crunchy and then you get a mouthful of dough on the inside. 
especially if they're not done all the way. That doesn't happen when you have Olympia. Oh, mouthful of dough. That reminds me of Taco Bell. What about Taco Bell? Mouthful of dough. People, oh, people that work there. Because they don't fill them up enough? Yeah. Uh, here lately, when we've been getting Taco Bell, I uh, get a Craver's box. It's got a, a taco. Uh, right now, they have the uh, fries, nacho fries, and a, a, a burrito. Well, you go to eat the burrito, and the, <laughs> first, bite, the, first, the first bite's dough and sour cream. The next bite's dough, a little sour cream and cheese. The next bite's dough, cheese, and beans. And the next couple bites, beans. And finally, when you get down to the last couple bites, then you finally find some meat. Don't they realize you're supposed to spread everything evenly out? Yeah, that? I have no idea why that is. Why there's only like, have you guys noticed that? It's like, there's only like sour cream on one end or meat on one end. It's not like spread out throughout the... Yeah, whoever makes the tacos knows the meat goes all the way across the bottom and then everything else. So burritos should be the same way. You put the meat in the bottom and then everything else or any, just, you know what I mean. I'm just letting a little bit of the excess run off here. Putting them on my paper towel right here to dry. You just want to let them get a nice light golden brown. I'm going to go in with another. Be one, very careful. Don't burn yourself. One thing I will say, Taco Bell has those new $1 uh, flatbreads. Oh yeah, they're the, so good. The uh, Beef and potato and the chicken supreme one. Uh, we tried both of them. Only a dollar. They're really good. I could I could make a meal out of just like three or four of the uh, beef and potato ones. They actually put some filling inside of them. So. And do you guys know that you can actually go to Taco Bell and you can order the flatbreads? You can buy the flatbreads separate without actually having to buy a whole. When she means flatbread, she means just the bread, not the flatbread, yeah. beef, and potato stuff. I just like they used to make the chalupas and stuff. They'll sell them to you, just the flatbreads, because me and the chef have went there before and ordered like, or just ordered like four flatbreads, and then we took them home and made them up ourselves. Yeah, they're they're great for fish tacos. Yeah. All right, there goes in our last four so as soon as i get the last four done if you can see these are nice and golden brown as soon as we get our last four done we'll bring you guys back and we will do a taste test so hold on to your britches okay guys there you go there is our plate of traditional filipino lumpia so, if you guys have a chance to make these, please try. Um, I will leave my recipe in the description box below. Just have a little patience, and I promise you're going to be so grateful for it. Kudos to our Filipino friends. Our friends from the Philippines, because they definitely know how to make a lumpia. So we salute you, our Filipino friends, and thank you to Sarah Jane and Mama Dee Dee for asking us to make these. We hope that you make these. We hope that you enjoy them, and we hope that they are exactly what you're looking for. So, um, with that said, I'm going to have to have a little taste. Chef's... Um, He's not ready to eat just yet, so he just took some medicine for his tooth. So I'm gonna be. Whew. You can see the carrot in there. If I can get it to focus. Whew. There we go. Carrot, green onions, onions, cabbage. Mm mm mm. And a very nice crunch. <laughs> Delicious, guys. Hope you have a chance to make them. We will see you guys tomorrow when we bring you yet another video. So we love you all. Welcome to our new subscribers. Thank you to our faithful subscribers. And we will see you in the next video. Night, guys. You want to say night, Chef? Night, Chef. Night, guys. 
see you in the next video. Bye-bye.